All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the June 2023 Reports Interest Group meeting. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about usability of reporter, and we have a special guest, Stephanie Leary from Equinox. Um, so we've got a little bit of, let me drop the agenda into the chat. You guys all probably have this already because you got here. But uh, just for quick and easy, uh, quick and easy reference. Why can I never find you, chat? There you are. <laughs> All right. And if you haven't seen already, Stephanie dropped some links to slides into the thing today. Um, so just to to start off with we'll be talking we'll be talking a little bit about what usability is uh, and then kind of getting into the nitty-gritty with both simple reports and the regular reporter and talking about you know how it's used and how we can improve usability in in both interfaces so let's uh i'll let you take it away stephanie <laughs> I'm going to need screen sharing permission. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, advanced. All participants. Okay. You got it now? Awesome. I'm trying to find the right tab. And of course, it's not showing up. Here we go. All right, you should see the words UI Overview 2023. See it. Fantastic. Okay. Now let me get to where I can actually advance these slides. Huh, there we go. Okay. Always tricky to get this set up. Good afternoon, everyone. I think I have met most of you um, in person at the Evergreen Conference or in another interest group meeting. In case I haven't, I'm Stephanie Leary. I'm the front end developer for Equinox. I started last September. Um, you've probably seen me, if you follow the bug tracker, um, marking things for accessibility or usability or a bunch of tags that start with UX dash, which is user experience. Um, I am corralling those bugs. Um, I will say I've been here, what, is it 10 months now? And Evergreen doesn't look great yet, but um, that's because I've been shoring up our accessibility under the hood. And so let me just dive in and talk about where we're going once I get done with the invisible stuff that we need to be like legally compliant with things. Um, the reason, one of the reasons that Evergreen looks so inconsistent from screen to screen is that there hasn't been a unified pattern library for the developers to use when they create screens. Um, and so we are going to have one. This is a long multi-year project that has lots of pieces. And as you can see, there's only one piece from this screen that is linked. Um, we're starting with tiny, tiny pieces. So let me back up and say, I am the um, coordinator for the new UI interest group. Um, and we will be kind of corralling all of the work that needs to be done to make Evergreen's interface more unified and generally better. Um, of course, I'm doing quite a bit of that work on various contracts that Equinox has, but this is also a community project. Um, we need lots of community input on various things. And we've already got a couple of pieces started. Um, so we will be reviewing all of the pieces of all of the things that you see in Evergreen. Um, I did a quick overview of uh, like a, a review of some of the pieces I put together a small inventory and started with, you know, just buttons, just taking screenshots of buttons and didn't get very far before it became apparent just how inconsistent everything is. The wording is inconsistent. The colors are inconsistent. Like what do we use in, in this situation? And so we're going to be doing this piece by piece for all of the bits that make up the evergreen screens. And there's a lot, as you can see, like this is a long list and we're just tackling the, the tiny question of how buttons are aligned in the modal windows. 
Like those are inconsistent. Sometimes the primary action that you need is on the left. Sometimes it's on the right. The words don't always make sense. Sometimes it just says cancel or okay. And you're like, what am I saying okay to? Like the wording could be, you know, better for the context that you're looking at. So the pattern library, even though that has multiple pieces, is just one step. The next step is an editorial style guide for all of the little words that go into the screens in Evergreen. And this is called microcopy. Uh, and it, it covers everything from the title of the page down to the words on one button. Um, and the things that I think will be probably most interesting to you for reports are going to be the table column headers, the empty states, that's the no results yet message, um, things like that. Those we can tweak to give you some hints as to how to make it not empty. Um, the example that I give here is when I was first um, poking into acquisitions, I was logged in at the consortium level and Andrea was showing me around and I had no invoices or anything to look at. And she was like, oh, well, you're logged in at the wrong workstation level. And I went, oh, of course, I'm dumb. Well, it could be um, helpful if we said something in the interface like, hey, if there's nothing here to look at, you may be logged in at the wrong you know, OU level. Um, change your workstation setting or something like that, or change your filters. But the other big um, thing that I think will be probably interesting um, to you in reports is the error messages and the success messages and the, the in-progress like loading messages. So at the first interest group meeting a few weeks ago, uh, error messages came up as something that we sort of needed to, everybody was, was very interested in working on that immediately. Um, and Susan has a spreadsheet that she has shared with that group um, and it's linked in the um, meeting notes for the UI interest group. And that's that's where I, I sent this link. We don't have a, a wiki page specifically for the error message project yet um, because I had to stop and do ALA things, but I will come back next week and, and put up a proper page for the error messages project. So we're gonna go through and look at all those error messages and say, are they helpful? Mostly not. <laughs> um, how can we rewrite them to be helpful? Um, you know. Do they need to be different in different contexts? Um, so we'll be looking at that. We're aiming towards, and again, this is a multi-year, this, this is a long project. The pattern library, which is the first slide I showed, is one piece. The style guide, the microcopy, is another piece. And along with those two big pieces, then we will have some page templates to show design or show the developers how to put those together in a sensible way and a visual style guide for like individual tiny pieces that they may have to sort of cobble things together with like color and typography and spacing and things like that. The page template, um, the layout template example, let me skip ahead a tiny bit and show this. So one of the things that I have noticed um, in, in coming into Evergreen without any prior experience with it um, until I, I joined Equinox is that we have some really inconsistent layouts for screens where we have like the details from a record of some sort at the top of it, whether it be you know, a catalog record or a patron record or um, a PO or an invoice or something like that. And then we have a grid of things that are related to that. Sometimes the details on the top, uh, sometimes like with the patrons, it's on the side. Then there may be some search filters on that screen too. Sometimes those are on top, sometimes they're on the side. And then we have the issues with the grid, um, not to quite displaying the way that we would want. The column widths especially drive people nuts, I know. Um, so, this is an example from a book called Refactoring UI, and this is the before example, um, where it's a little hard to tell what's important on this screen, and um, the table is kind of cluttered, and you can see some of the data is truncated, which is very similar to what we have in some of our evergreen screens. 
And in the book, this is the after example. And I'll, I'll toggle back and forth here for a second um, so you can kind of see what's going on here. But the important information that you might want to check at a glance has been set apart with a different color. Um, the heading sizes have been changed a little bit. And then down in the table, some columns got combined. Um, if they had information that you probably would never want to see separated, but we needed to sort of move it so that you could fit more of the characters into a column. Um, we use, you know, there's a, a color change there to indicate this is a stock price or something like that. Um, so there's a color change there. Um, and all of this is where we're going. Um, so let me toggle back real quick. You can see on this one, everything's white and the buttons are really bright. And on this one, the, the page background has been darkened a little bit. The buttons have been de-emphasized because they're not actually the important thing on this screen. It's the stuff in the blue box that's important. And so I'm working on some things to kind of get us to this, this point. But like I said, um, this, is, this is a lot. So we're going to tackle small pieces of this. Um, and I'm going to be working bits of this into some of ever or some of Equinox's projects, starting with reports, um, which is coming up very, very, very soon, like within days on our, our development calendar. Um, so you can see our roadmap in the UI interest group here. Um, and I've given a few examples of other um, mature design systems so we can kind of see how this is all going to look when we get done. But um, again, so I wanted to talk about these, these small pieces of it that I think are probably most relevant to you um, in reports. Uh, so if you would like to help review those error messages, we would be delighted to have input from you all on this. And this is where I'm coming to you and saying, hey, I need your expertise as power users of Evergreen because I'm new here and I don't do, you know, library workflow things all day. I do screens all day. <laughs> and so um, I need your expertise about this data and about these workflows and how to make this work best for you. I know a lot about design principles um, and how to make things work in web interfaces, but I need your knowledge of the data that you work with all day in your libraries um, and how to lay this out. So the other thing um, that I will need a lot of input on uh, coming up in the next couple of months um, is the table column widths. I have a working copy of a revamped grid for the Angular screens that uses HTML tables rather than the sort of grid-based thing that we have now, which means that the columns can size themselves appropriately for their contents. And we don't have to have this sort of standardized, everything is the same width thing. Um, and I didn't quite have time to, to put in the, the ones that I have already, but I talked to, you know, as I was talking to, to some colleagues about this, they were like, oh yeah, the barcodes column is getting cut off. It needs to be at least 14 characters at all times. And I was like, oh, hey, that's useful information that I didn't know as a UI person who doesn't work with barcodes all day, that they're always at least 14 characters. That's valuable. So I put in, hey, barcode column, always at least 14 characters. I've got things like uh, the name. We have lots of columns in different reports. They're just called name. But then based on the IDL class, it could be the name of, of different things. It could be the shelving location. It could be a person's name. So if I've got in the new code, there we have the column name, uh, the keyword, and I've got you know defaults based on that. But then I also have um, overrides based on the ideal class. So we can say a name is at least twenty characters. A person's name. So if the if the ideal class is like AOU or or whatever that, um, then it's at least thirty characters. I'm I'm just making numbers up. Um, so we can do specific things like that. So the, the defaults are going to be sort of based on the data type, but then we can override for specific things in the IDL. 
um, so specific tables um, in the grid. Um, so I'm going to figure out <laughs> how best to collect this data. It'll be a spreadsheet of some sort. Um, and I will I will put this out to the UI interest group, but I will also send it out to general because I want lots of input uh, from, from everybody on what these should be. The there's two pieces that I'm missing in the code, then this is why I haven't like like shared it with the world yet. Um, the the column resizing mechanism um, is gonna have to change because the one that we have now is is it it, it works on a completely different basis than than the one that we will be um, doing. And then uh, the other thing I have to do is move all of these defaults into an English specific context so that we can get contributions from our multilingual contributors because um, you know, different words are different lengths in different languages. And so uh, a shelving location in English might be 150 percent of that width in German. Uh, and so we need to have locale specific widths. And we can we can you know default them all to, to English, but it'd be great if we could say, and by the way, the ones in Spanish are these these other widths. Um, and we will be defining those in terms of how many characters are visible. Um, so I will be setting up a spreadsheet soon to collect all of that. And I think we're gonna have probably like the, the standard data type and then specifically the, the ideal classes. Um, so we'll do like actor org unit, um, like circulation specific stuff, act specific stuff, all of that. Um, and the other thing that I'm doing with that is working on the alignment of data. So numbers are always gonna be aligned to the right. Um, unless they are things like ID numbers, where you wouldn't be comparing them numerically, they're just strings that happen to all be numbers. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I've got that is aligned to the right besides numbers. I think that's it. Um, the other thing that we are working on and this is this is built into the code i don't have a user interface for it yet but we're going to have some user specific settings about the density of the table so i've got um, and if you use gmail you've seen this before this is like the compact like normal and comfortable um density settings and this just talks about the the amount of white space between each line and between each column I've got that built in, it's working. Um, but right now in order to use it, you have to go into like the, the nasty settings editor and, and put in specific stuff. So I'm hoping to just make it a little drop down um, in the user preferences, but you'll be able to control the amount of data that you, you see on the screen and how many rows are there. So like this would be a very wide setting and you would be able to crunch that down. Um, and make it much more compact. I am going to stop sharing. Oh, there's, if you want to read more about user interface design, you are welcome to. There's my recommended reading list. Um, where's my Zoom thing? Stop share. Okay, there we go. Um, so all of that is in the works. And um, I think I'm hoping that some of those grid things are going to solve some of the problems that y'all have with reports. But I know that there's a lot more to talk about um, in terms of usability and reports, the filters, um, the input forms, the prints, versions, there's, there's a lot. So, um, are, is there anything that anybody wants to ask about the stuff that I, I just showed before we sort of open it up for a free for all? <laughs> I don't have anything to ask, but I do think it's helpful to see what's 
going on, you know, behind the scenes so that, you know, we have a bit more context about the kind of work that you're doing. So, you know. <laughs> yeah, um, I will, again, like a lot of it has been invisible so far. I've been like, mm -hmm. you know, working on making sure that people with who are using screen readers can actually get to all the form fields and stuff yeah. like that, like basics that, that we need to have in place. So, um, I'm trying to think if there's anything that I've done even that's like super visible. <laughs> I don't know if there is. Um, you know, some colors have changed. Everything else has really been under the hood. Uh, and I think the first place you'll probably see a lot of the changes to forms happening is over in um, circulation. We have the new experimental angular circulation interface, and I'm about to rip apart the patron search form and move all those placeholders into visible labels that are persistent so that you don't lose what you're typing into the patron search when you start filling in data. But um, reports is, is still like a big question mark. So the we're in an awkward spot right now, and I had hoped that I would have something to show you all today. Um, but we've had illnesses and various setbacks, and we're a few weeks behind schedule on, on reports. So we're at an awkward spot today where I don't have anything to show you yet. Oh, well, um, we got stuff to show you. <laughs> oh, good. I thought you might. So I did see the flurry of um, changes, uh, bug reports that y'all made to the simple reports this week. And so, uh, yeah, I wanted to, to sort of open this up at this point because the plan for redoing reports and angularizing reports is to reuse a lot of the work that was done to build simple reports, which is in Angular already, and sort of add in the more complicated functionality that we have over in, I call it power reports, but like there the, the original the original report module. Sure. Um, but I know that like there are some issues with simple reports and I know that not everyone loves simple reports at all. Um, and so, uh, you know, before we go, you know, duplicating things that people don't find useful, let's talk about those. And I'm going to find my sheet of paper and like take notes while we talk Fantastic. about Fantastic. So in the agenda, there is a, well, first of all, I want to give uh, a shout out to Elizabeth Davis, who has done a lot of the bug reporting and took I provided her with the notes from our meeting in January and she went to town uh, making bug reports so thank you thank you Elizabeth <laughs> uh, that's <Wow>. wonderful <laughs> um, so the, there's a new tag which is something that I had been thinking about for a while having a tag specific to the simple to simple reports so we now have one it's called reports simple which you can search for on Launchpad. Um, and the other wonderful thing that Elizabeth did for me just today, for all of us today, <laughs> was uh, going through the notes that we made in January, which I will share with everybody now. And um, sort of highlighted the stuff that hasn't yet wow. been Launchpadified. So, uh, that'll be this will give us a good opportunity to talk about this because some of that stuff is more designed focus. And some of this came from the interest group and some of this actually came from a meeting that we had with some members internally because you know this was my document. So you know we we didn't record that meeting, so we have no context about some of of this stuff. So we can talk about it. Is it a real problem? Is it, you know, something that we can look at right now and, and decide whether or not we want to actually make this a bug or is it something that we want to, you know, be like, ah, that's not really a problem. <laughs> um, yeah, so the, the, num the stuff at the top here is kind of based on the output section. Um, you know what, I've got, how about I share my screen and we can kind of talk about, like, look at things while we're also looking at the doc. 
Yeah, that'd be great. And I know that you said that there were um, quite a few sort of design and layout things that you weren't sure how to word as bug reports. And I would love to talk through those. Right. Um, yeah. I can either help figure out how to word that, or I could just make notes and, and just take it away during the development process. Cool, cool, cool. Um, all right. So I guess we'll, we'll just start at the top and work our way down uh, for now. Um, so let's see, one of the defaults is CSV, but not Excel. Uh, yeah, so I think, uh, all right, so this is, I'm looking at the regular reporter here. I'll go back into simple reports. Uh, I got a cat tail on my screen, so <laughs> <Ew>. yeah. <laughs> So I'm just looking at one of the of the demo servers right now. Um, so I'll go in and create something new. I'm going to select a report type. Go into here and I'll just look at output options right now. So yeah, I think um, I'm not sure if this came from this group or from our members, but um, you know, Excel has been like everybody. Everybody just just exports their stuff to Excel. So they're, they so they were confused as to why that the like, CSV was the preference as opposed to, you know, Excel. Like that's easy to fix. Yeah, yeah, you can <laughs> fix that. Yeah, so that's not that's not too bad. Um, so that is probably something that we can that we can launch Padify, having these top three, those top three options selected by default. Yes? Yeah, awesome. Thank you, Elizabeth. <laughs> um, all right. Okay, there's the, have save and schedule. Uh, you have to click save and schedule on this tab. Yeah, the, the thing that I'm oh, always yeah. doing, always doing with this interface is clicking, that's ours. Uh, <laughs> is clicking on um, save up here and then being like, oh, right, I have to go uh, back in and click save and run. Right. So, yes. yeah. We ran into this with link checker as well um, because that's one of those sort of batch processes that you don't always want to run immediately, but frequently you do. Mm -hmm. um, let me, I will go back and see what we did for that and see if it's any clearer and maybe we can improve it even more. Uh, when we do reports. All right. So that's another thing that uh, probably needs some clarification via via bug bugging. Um, if you want uh, me to take that one, I will. Yeah. yeah. Make a note for me to do that because we have some notes on that already. Sorry, go ahead, Jessica. No, you're fine. Um, thank you. Um, all right. So let me just say just before we move on to like the next thing, let me see if there's anything else here that kind of jumps out at me as far as being a usability problem. I mean, I am so used to running reports. To me, this seems okay. <laughs> I don't know if anybody else has anything to say about output options before we move on to something else. Actually, they're in the traditional reporter. There's a subtotal option, and there's not one here. Mm. So, like, if you have a count of circ, and it's like a daily circ report, it'll count all of the um, individual totals and give you a grand total at the bottom. Would that be in the display fields, though? No, it doesn't do it natively. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Um. I, I guess one thing That's to say about the recurrence interval catalog hitting the same template. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, can you enter like H days there? <laughs> like, I don't know if that's good. <laughs> um, I mean, I would I, presume, but you know. <laughs> so this doesn't. Uh, it doesn't. It doesn't give you a warning if you enter something that's not a number. Well, let's see. No, it doesn't. Mm, yeah. Okay, we need to fix that. Uh, 
Oof, can you imagine getting an hourly report? That would be oh that would be that would be something. <laughs> I don't know if if that should even be or if that option should be like <laughs> out of there. Like I don't know. Well, I think it is maybe useful when you need to do something bizarre like every eight hours or something like that. And it's Fair enough. not days, but I I do question that one. Let me let me raise that question. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. I think it would be useful if you wanted to do something t- like twice a day, then you would need to do 12 hours. But um, that does seem maybe not the most useful. <laughs> maybe we could at least put that at the bottom of the list. <laughs> like you're probably going to want days. Yeah. <laughs> or, there, you know, once a month or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. There is a current bug where I think we just filed it last week or the week before where the recurring interval only goes up to 24 hours because it's running on the time stamp and not the value. So if you say days, it doesn't do days. So, oh my. Um, so okay. that's already that's already a listed bug. So very good. Fix each other. <laughs> yeah I didn't even think about that wow yeah (laughs) yeah yeah we were looking for or no wait not not reoccurring I'm sorry it was age if you're looking at like the age of something it only goes for 24 years or hours (laughs) not even years (laughs) so sorry not intervals not recurrence but age but sorry but related yeah Kind of going off of that, um, mm-hmm. what when we introduced this, and, and this is kind of going into, you know, a little bit of what I want to talk about a little bit later, but um, like when we introduced this to the libraries, they were very overwhelmed by the number of options because they don't, our libraries, the, I mean, there's two, I think, common workflows out there in the community, like uh, there's, you know, central staff manages a bunch of shared templates and the libraries don't create their own. They just use those for running their reports. Uh, and then there's, you know, some consortia that open it up a little bit more and allow libraries to create their own templates. And, you know, it, it does, you know, take on like power users use it. Uh, but then, you know, they have to, they have to learn all, all about it. Um, <clears throat> so, but with our libraries who had never had the experience of using the legacy reporter, they looked at it and they went, wait, how is this simple? <laughs> um, so they, they yeah. were just overwhelmed by the number of options there. So what we decided to do was to take the number of options and really parse it down to what, what they will need to actually use in that order. So the this example here, is something that I think we we talked about, like, is there so many different iterations of this? And our thought was kind of like, well, you've already got the transforms in there. So it doesn't seem like we really need these other columns or we could just teach people how to use the transforms. Uh, of course, that comes with the problem with, which is another bug that I, that I filed last week, I think, about like the data types not exposed. So it then and the data type determines what transform options you have. Yes. So, and so um, that makes it hard to tell people, well, this is a timestamp. So these are the transform options you have, because you know, you don't they they don't know. They I mean they you can kind of guess by context, but like you you don't necessarily know when by at first glance what type what the data type is. Um so we just opted, and I could show uh, what that ended up looking like in our system. So for example, um, this is the, well, we'll start with weeding because for some reason we started with that here. Um, so here's all fields, weeding, all these call number things. <laughs> yeah, all these um, create date, time, create year, create year, month, all this stuff. Uh, and then the last circulated stuff up there. Uh, we parsed it down to 
and we renamed it Report Builder 2 to, you know, like, it's okay if you don't think it's simple. <laughs> it's like, well, we could we could rename it. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, this is weeding now. So, uh, yeah. We, yeah, we we got rid of we we don't some let some consortia do use uh call like call number prefix suffix we don't so we just took it out um we we took out that and we took out all the different date options and we're like we'll teach people how to use the transforms for that um would it be helpful to have some like subgroups here and like have so a they, little like toggle for the things like shelving location that have five or six that that's an idea too yeah okay. uh and they, there are some like the date fields up here in inventory right. Right. and then like some of the suggested ones yeah i'm thinking like within even within that all fields list we could do a a group and say shelving location fields yeah and then do like all six or seven of them but <laughs> that would require us to use the grouping options in the idl file and i don't know that those have been used very consistently um we will we have a a sort of to-do list item internally to go look at those later this summer awesome i see in the chat that people are agreeing that yes subgroups would be awesome there that's the right. first thing that came to my mind as I look through this and I see like, you know, six things in a row that are, that are call number related. I'm like, let's, let's group those. Awesome. Yeah. And we did this with a bunch. I think weeding might've been the, the biggest one. I have the list, I think, linked on the agenda of what awesome. we ended up pairing like what how what columns we ended up just taking out um and yeah i i saw your comment keen that teaching people to use the transforms could be tricky but um yeah <laughs> i don't know i it's it's a kind of a pick your poison situation <laughs> at least it was to us so i guess your mileage may vary there <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's there's no way to make this like super easy for everyone so mm -hmm. it's a question of is this option easier than that option and it's mm -hmm. a trade-off yeah, yeah for sure either way it's going to come down to training yes um uh let me get back to the agenda and share that link oh i see everybody. your reading list jessica yeah i've got it this is good yeah uh yeah here remove and rename yeah this we we made it a checklist and then i just made a copy of it so that it would be a little bit more legible for everybody and not like having things crossed out and are all of our notes all over it so <laughs> yeah yeah and i am i am thinking about this this whole checkbox thing on the on the left and like how that works and and then the gears are turning. <laughs> Look, how can I, how can I make this better? That's excellent. Here we go. We'll say the the first time Angela walked me through the the power reporter. I at one point I just covered my hand, my face, and I was like, "No, I can't look." She's like, "But you have to look." It's like, "No, I can't. I'm done." <laughs> We will make this better. <laughs> That's why we're excited that you're here. <laughs> and I'm glad that y'all are excited for my work too. This is <laughs> this is good. Okay. Um, yeah. So like I said, with that, we renamed it to report. We're, we're jumping around in the agenda a little bit, but you know, and as things come up, you know, I wanted to kind of take advantage of that. Um so let's see going back to this yeah so these were just some some things that i think we took out and and just dealt with in transforms and again i don't know if this needs to be a bug or not but mm -hmm. yeah it's it's just kind of a a thing <laughs> yeah let me make a note and i will bring that up when we get to that part in development 
Um, so there is a related bug to that that topic that if you use, um, I think it's in the other. If you if you use like like circ date or like circulation start date, it defaults to raw as the transform and it doesn't run right. So you automatically oh. have to remember, okay, this, oh. the name of this says date. So I have to change the transform to date for it to work. So that's an existing bug. So I think if you pair the two things, you might get a better uh, experience. So, and in a way kind of maybe start teaching people which transforms go to which names. So if well, you decide to keep these yeah i think we can we can do some stuff too there where if the data type is a date we can change default the default transform to, to the date yeah uh date mm -hmm. should always transform to date because there's like year year and month so um it's it's all it's a little lower on the list but um it's under the other i think you can do that in the idl too if I recall correctly, because we've been monkeying yeah. around with it. So yeah, we'll mm -hmm. have to take a look at that and make sure that those things, that that happens <laughs> where we yeah. roll it out. All right, good deal. Um, let's see. Do, do, do. Okay, so this... The circ count by Dewey hundred blocks. I'm trying to remember if we actually ended up taking that out. That's an error in the database in general. So yeah. um, we tested that here at Pales and it didn't work. So Equinox was like, oh, the table is mislabeled. And mm. so it's, it's a Steam and filed the bug for us. Cool. No item status. What does that mean? I think it's just the just uh, it's not there. Uh, oh, there's no item it. status option. As far but it's as it's only I... in circulation, so mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure why you would need. I guess you if you wanted open circ with lost things. That's what uh, I would think. Yeah, and or yeah. claims returned, you know, stuff mm -hmm. like that. Because you can actually do a circulation report on things that are, were checked out and are now not. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so but would like the general user really like a simple user or a simple report need to be that complex would they be running something that um i mean i guess it depends i'm trying to think of an example in our consortium i i, I mean the, the problem is that circulation often is complex you know like um we have like three examples of lost reports that we run because it's like one library wants to see it where we want to see all of our our things that are lost everywhere and then another library wants to see it as like oh i want to see all of our lost things or, or all of you know everything that is lost at our library whether or not it's owned by us and another library wants to see it as you know I want to see all the things that are marked lost on the patron record, whether they say that they're lost or not, you know, <laughs> whether the status is lost or not. Um, so there, it, it, it just is complex. Like there's no, there's no getting around it in, in, in some cases, you know, and, yeah. and the other thing is like a claims returned item, you know, is that thing marked on the record still as claims returned, but the status has changed, you know, there's, things about things like that so the answer I guess is maybe <laughs> you know I, and maybe that's not what the simple reporter is for maybe that is more for the the you know the original power reporter but I, I could also see it where like you want to run I don't know I think you need it just for the lost stuff, really, or long overdue. I'll put it in. I just. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I just know from some of the tickets that I've put in on the, about the simple reporter, um, the optimization is not there yet. So yeah, you just can't run that type of report yet in the simple right. reporter. So right. But that's another thing. It's another thing. <laughs> Like this is what it needs. It, it, it needs to be able to, if it needs to be able to say that, then it needs to be optimized in order to give you that information. Yeah, I think. Um, yeah, and then circ ID is here. I don't know what other people think about this, but for us, when we were looking at this, we decided to rename circulation ID to circulation count because it automatically transforms itself to account. And realistically, a simple report user probably not going to need to see the ID. In some cases, they might, but there's like, really nothing they can do with the ID number, though. If, exactly. Even if they so, have it. So yeah, that's 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 what we did in our in our situation. And I think people were confused about the label circulation start date. Like, is that the checkout date? Is it a renewal? You know, what is that? What does that mean? Um, and I think. Um, you know, in the case of a renewal, it's not always, you know, because it's it's like, is it the the date of the original circulation, or if it's if it's been renewed, you know, where is this? Okay, this is ours. Um, so yeah, I don't remember if we changed the name or not. We might have changed it to check out. Oh, no, we kept it because we didn't know what else to change it to. <laughs> Would it be helpful for me to just put together a spreadsheet that has all the fields and then open that up and um, add some columns for like suggested new name? Um, you know, the default transform now and the default transform that we want and any missing things. And I just open up that spreadsheet to you all and um, we could work on it that way because this sort of labeling question is exactly the kind of thing that I want to do with the, the UI text. But we also have issues here with like transform options and um, like data type things. So if I copy all of those and then like go back and maybe we can add the, um, like the IDL class and data type mm. um, from the file. And then we can kind of work on, on all of these. Does that? Yeah, that's great. That makes sense? Okay. Yeah. I will work on that. I don't know if I will get to it this afternoon, but. Um, Whenever you can, that would be great. Yeah, like in Thanks. the next week or so, for sure. Let's see. I'm Beth. thinking I'm taking some days off, so like uh, so. you're allowed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm off next week, so you won't hear oh, yeah. from me next week. So <laughs> okay, that's fair. Uh, let's see. There's uh, so Beth says there are some date fields that are not only default to raw but do not have the typical transform options. Yeah, that's elections. Yeah, we'll fix that. Yeah. Cool, cool, anything cool. that sh that is a date should default to the date transform and should have all the date options that's for yeah. sure uh and i wanted to check on this checkout library name doesn't work as filter because i think you couldn't replicate it right elizabeth no but yeah. i could have been not running it the same way because there's checkout short code name and then there's checkout library name so i may have used the wrong one yeah, let's see about filters, uh, libraries, maybe circulating library. Is this still weeding? Okay. Uh, 
Is it here maybe that it's the... I think it might have been only in circulation that I ran it. Okay. Circulating library. Maybe this isn't a thing anymore. <laughs> that would be something. I, my test was in circulation report type okay. and I used checkout maybe, library. Just maybe that. this was under the wrong heading. Oh no, we're under circulation now. Okay, never mind. Do do. Well, circ modifier name is definitely a problem. Like, you know, I know, I think you filed a bug about it. Um, yeah. My kind of understanding of this is that this is like by design because of the data type it is. So really like code should be the only option here. And I think that in places here where we're seeing like missing transforms or like the, the default is wrong, I think that those are issues that pop up in other places in Evergreen mm -hmm. as well. And so like if that if there's a problem there, we're probably also seeing a problem with things like the field mapper editor and um like the grid columns. So yeah. This is a good opportunity to really look at what's in the ideal and, and clean that up a little bit. Yeah, maybe this is checkout. Okay, no, maybe that's, maybe this is not a thing. And we can just take that out. Uh, we will strike that. I always forget where strike through is. There you go. <laughs> there shouldn't be any stat cats in the simple reporter. I didn't think there were any. Yeah, but there should be. <laughs> oh yeah, no, no, like you can't, but yeah. at the moment, but it would be nice yeah. to. Yeah. Because I'm like, I hope they're not in there because I filed a bug that they're not. <laughs> no, no, no. I feel like I would have real <laughs> look real bad. If I think I think that's what this no, is no. saying is that there's <laughs> there are no stat cats. <laughs> yeah. Um and I think this this is a comment that can go generally, like if you're adding a library field. Um, and this is something that the, the original reporter does do. So if I added, for example, that checkout library field, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, that shouldn't be a filter. <laughs> uh, oh, but that's a display field. Never mind. Um, okay. So never mind. Never mind about that. Oh, check out library name. That's where that is. Yeah. Okay. So that that is a thing. Ah, so that should default to the one you're on, right? Yeah, but hold on a second. Maybe we don't have like the most. Sorry. <laughs> I was just on my, on ours. So I get just a second. Are you All on? Fails. I'm on. Three nine two. Three nine three. But maybe 
Uh, I don't know what this thing is on. Anyway, we need to take that out. I thought we did, but it's still there. Anyway, <laughs> so um, at any rate, uh, going back to this. So if we do checkout library, this is the problem with having more than one window open showing the same interface. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so having this default select your the workstation you're logged in as would be very useful. I mean, it's nice though that you can search, but yeah. All right, so we're in filters. Okay. Yeah. Filters. The the filter value should okay. Got it. Yeah. Well, and there's also no indication there whether you should put in the short name or like, what do you enter in? Or is that, that was a drop down, wasn't it? It is, yeah, a, if you start yeah, typing, okay, okay, it gives okay. you some stuff, yeah. Okay. Yeah, just so that you can see, it's like, yeah. So it's there. There we go, okay. But uh, yeah, for a, lot, for a system feel slightly like- better. <laughs> for a system like us, if we, you know, do this, uh, yeah it's a long That's, list <laughs> I mean, it should just default to the one that you're looking at yeah yeah or even the ones that you have working org units for mm. yeah not the whole list uh let's see what else we got here we're running low on time so we might need to visit the other reporter at an at another meeting <laughs> that's totally fine um i want to make sure that i'm not like eating up all of your time doing you know our design research yes and i want to but... make sure that you still have time to talk about the things that are important to you know the group members yeah. but i can drop in anytime and talk user yeah. interface stuff until we are blue in the face so. <laughs> well i think i don't know I, I don't know about you guys but i think this is a very you know a, a very a lot of interest to to those of us <laughs> having a voice in the development that's going on you know very important i think to this the beauty of open source <laughs> yeah yes uh, awesome okay. well i will keep looking through this part report um if i don't know if anybody has to leave in the next two minutes but if there's any questions i can i can stay for a few minutes and, and keep talking um but i just wanted to Check if anybody wanted to bring something up before they have to run away. I'm I'm okay to keep going for another 15, 20 minutes if if people don't have anywhere to be. I can hang out. I can yeah. hang out a little while too. Awesome. All right. Well, we'll keep recording. So if anybody does have to bail, we can uh, catch you up later. Cool. Awesome, Brett. Oh, okay. Thanks, Keen. Thanks for your Thank comments. You. I appreciate it. That cats have always been difficult to report on, which is yeah, ironic. yeah, I agree. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. nice that they're custom, but the fact that they're custom makes them challenging. It's <laughs> difficult to work with for sure. Yeah. All right. Um, Let's all right. Keep, keep on rolling. Cool. So we talked about what's under collections. And if anybody is, wants to jump in with anything as we're going, please feel free to do that. Uh, let's see, what to overdo circulation, open circulation uh, mean. Adding so account. Andrea said for some like stuff like that, it's a, more of a docs bug. Maybe uh, um, like defining what each field means. I guess. I guess, but shouldn't the field hmm. be labeled in a way that makes sense? <laughs> yes. Oh. Yes. 
I will leave that to the labeling spreadsheet, but this is what I, I asked Andrea. Here Fair are enough. two examples. What do we do? And she said a docs book. So, but she then gave me the definitions of how that okay. works. That's yeah. fair enough. Well, we can think about clarifying those labels. Um, another thing that we could do. I don't. Hmm, I wonder if some of these fields could use descriptions underneath. Mm like a pop-up like a Tool like tip. a like a like a fine print line under the the name or off to the right of the name or something like that i think it might get a little busy it might yeah hmm let me think about that some more we have a couple of other spots where we're sort of adding that um that kind of thing and there's like a, a master checkbox at the top of the screen to like to turn them on or off hmm. Let me think some more about that. Oh, like in, like the cataloging help button. Yes, it, that's exactly what I have in mind. Click. Okay, yes. Yep. As long yep. as you could turn it off. <laughs> yes, because not everybody needs it and we don't want to clutter the screen unnecessarily, but we're we're putting that um, something like that into the mark editor for the, um, the subfield codes. Uh, so yeah. Hmm. You're giving me lots of food for thought here. <laughs> so the billing stuff, uh, yeah, this is all labeling, it looks like. Okay. And the billing stuff looks like those have all been reported. Yeah, they're and all they're... one one bug because it's like these are just fields that are missing that people need. Yeah. Uh yeah, and then we're for other stuff we're missing having any holds reports. I think that might be a fun like that it doesn't have the bandwidth to do it. Cause even Maybe. like if you run holds reports in the traditional reporter, you have to run them overnight or yeah. Oh really? We have mm. to run some of ours overnight. Like really? You can't. Yeah. Wow. Okay. We're a nice unique setup that because we don't do search share so it makes it a little tricky oh interesting okay so so they hang out in the system longer theoretically <laughs> yeah yeah so they just take longer to run gotcha um yeah i feel like the no folders and the no sharing are kind of related in a way okay. Do you want a sharing one or do you want me to just add it to the folders one? I don't know. Uh, I I mean, I could see a scenario, I guess, where you'd only want to share specific reports with a person. But in that case, I don't know, maybe you would just put them in a shared folder and so that I, I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, how do you do that? Yeah. So yeah, that one's that one's a little tricky until we get folders or tagging or something. Mm -hmm. Um let's see. You know, your pending status. That one's a fun one. <laughs> you could just run report after report after report, and you have no idea if you're running anything, which I did this morning. <laughs> yeah, I think I did that too recently. <laughs> and I'm like, please kill these reports because they're not supposed to be running. The uh, uh, let's see, yeah. So I already talked about the simple thing. I, you know, that's that's was just our thing. We did re we did rename it, um, and we also took out all of the call number sort key columns everywhere that we saw them because that seems like a field that's not really that useful for a simple simple user. <laughs> 
and we already talked about the listing of fields you know streamlining renamed so that would be that would be good question for you on the spreadsheet that i'm making do we yeah. want do we need separate tabs for display fields and filters or hmm. is one list sufficient do we want them to say the same thing in both places good question make one for now and if we need a second tab on that spreadsheet we can add one i think at the very least there should be a column that says is this a filter yes or no you know gotcha yeah i will okay i will add that mm -hmm. uh yeah, and this is just an example of a report that someone was trying to run and they couldn't get it. But again. Uh, I did have someone tell me that they would prefer to see the filters first uh, and then the display fields because it does and it does kind of make sense because like you're kind of like this is the what I want to see and these are the things that I want to see in the the tablet. I don't know how other people feel about that but that was some feedback that we got For sure, canned reports to get people started would be so mm -hmm. nice. Yes, Is I it, agree. Would it be, well, I guess most people run the, the reports the same way for a majority of things, except maybe cataloging. What do you mean? Well, like, for like, for us, we always have to have certain, like, you have to remember to add certain things, like, that is deleted, and yeah, oh, everybody's yeah. going to have to add that. Everyone's going to have to have owning library or circulating library. Yeah. But, yeah. Like, we have some libraries that only, can only run on circulating library, and some can only run, would prefer to run it on owning library. So, like, we end up having two of every, two of everything, but. Yeah. Mm. So, when you start a new report, would it be helpful if there were just already columns for, like, owning library? like stock yeah so you like there's always two or three columns to start with mm -hmm. I think so that's what we were hoping with the is deleted yeah gotcha so yeah. like regardless okay. if you're running a patron report or a weeding report or collection for it it always has the is deleted field in there yeah I yeah it, I think it does kind of make sense like a lot of what is missing from, and this is kind of getting into the legacy, the the, the the original reporter a little bit. But a lot of what is missing there is like ways to manage it that make it easier for the central, you know, report managers. So, like, what was something that we do is like in house we have okay, so that we don't have like all this variation if we're making like an item. Temp, you know template we say these are the standum cluttered columns that we offer in an item report uh like so to have that a template of a template <laughs> <laughs> that you could then like uh you know manipulate to to do whatever you need it to do that would be that would be very helpful yeah I, yes, Taryn, my thought was that you would be able to delete them, but that like we would just, instead of starting you with a completely blank report, you would always start with two or three columns. And and I think um, they kind of tried to do that with like the, so yeah, the common filters, fields. And then even at the top, it says field selected for display. It tells you like what you're displaying and, and then it does suggest filters. Mm. Okay, based on common yeah. use, you might want to include these. Yeah, but, but even like more strongly than a suggestion, we could just start you out with two or three things. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think it does make sense for like weeding reports. You're always going to need 
the circulating library is deleted. Um, yeah, I think we can come up with some defaults there. I don't. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop here and add a caveat that it might not make it into the current round of development that we're doing like this month, but I agree that that's something that would be nice to have. I'll see how much I can squeeze in. <laughs> so using the filter tab to construct the filters and select values for them. I think, yeah, this is just like, okay, yeah, documentation kind of stuff, like like what what people need to know kind of things. Um, Yep, yep. Yeah, so this is just like expanding yeah. upon the documentation. Yep, I see. Okay. Well, although this I think is supposed to be the, on a wish list instead, so I'm going to put that up there. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, I see. Columns you previous in in other reports. I yeah, I, th I think what they were asking for was like, well, mm -hmm. I already picked like you know the owning library in display, so could that also be brought over into filters? filters. I don't know if you. I, I don't know see. if you've already if you would want that all the time, but. Mm -hmm. You no, know, I see. It makes sense to use, like, like, draw the filter list from the columns you've already chosen as display fields. But not if we do filters first, as the person suggested. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I see a workflow problem here. I'll have to think through right, that. Right, right. And the filters necessarily need to be kind of different from what you display mm -hmm. on because yeah, it's it's a label as opposed to a thing. But you know, a, 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 a reporter, a person who's not familiar with how that all hangs together wouldn't know that, so. Right, right, right. I see lots of research into so maybe that in my future. <laughs> maybe that is more of a documentation thing than a wish list thing, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I'll hmm. put it back down there. Okay. Uh, I'll just add something like clarity on why uh, filters and just why and how display and filters different. Oh my gosh, the descriptions of the transforms and operators for sure. We need some like on the screen explanations of those. I agree. Yeah, so I, I sorry. No, oh, no, no. I was Go just going to say, I'm not going to lie. Whenever it says greater than, I imagine the little uh, alligator teeth. In yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's what I remember. Yeah, yeah. So I remember it's going to eat it. <laughs> Third grade math. It wants to eat the bigger one. <laughs> yes. Uh-huh. Yeah, and we, we haven't yeah. rolled this out to our consortium, you know, in general yet so I can't I don't really have examples of this is how it's being used in the wild yeah. but Elizabeth did so that's good <laughs> cool yeah we're using it limitedly but um... so we did make some changes to it based on the feedback that we got so we'll hopefully be rolling it out before I 
disappear to have a baby. <laughs> but, How much uh, longer? Uh, I'm due at the end of August, but Ooh. my my son was born uh, like a little over two weeks early. So, you know, there's a chance that I will I will go early with this one as well. <laughs> just like mark you as maybe for all of August. <laughs> yeah, no, it's like I, I like put myself on the calendar on baby watch as of like yeah. August 10th. <laughs> for sure. Mine was a week late, which describes everything like from then from from then on. That's, yes, I yeah. I can empathize because you know third trimester <laughs> not easy in the beginning. <laughs> no, that's the most miserable I've ever been. Yeah. All right. Well, um, I know that that everybody probably needs to go and do different yeah. things. I have got a lot to think about, and I have lots of notes. And thank you for this document. This is super helpful. Awesome. Um, I will see what we can do to fix some things in simple reports while we are cleaning things up for power reports and hopefully get some of these bugs knocked out and I will get that spreadsheet set up. I might get it knocked out today. Um, and we can start talking about those field labels. And so um, I have a question for Taryn cause she's still here. <laughs> Taryn, would it be better because you're you're on the schedule to speak about um, uh, you know making um, change creating views in the reporter next month? Would it be better to continue this conversation next month and put that on hold? Or I don't know if you if you can do that, Stephanie. But I I may not be here next month, and hopefully we will actually be like done with. The, the next round of development by then. Oh, okay. So um, I'm going to take as much of this feedback into account as I can during this round, but we will have to like draw a line under this yeah. project versus like future, future development. So, okay. Yeah. Um, okay. For never me, mind. <laughs> for me, uh, I think I'm available either whatever month. Um, okay. See. August well, is August on the 30th. I think that's yeah. right. Yeah. So that would be fine for me too. So um, if the next phase of development on this is done before next month, maybe we could look at that. If I can share it at that point. I yeah, don't know. that's true. Like we have to send it out for partner testing first. Um, yeah. But th now that said, the spreadsheet with the labels and stuff, all those things are relatively easy to change at any time with small launchpad bugs. So we could keep talking about the labels and um, the little bits of like instructions where we, we need things for like transform explanations and, and operator explanations and things like that. I think that we can do that kind of under the aegis of both this group and the UI group in our, in our microcopy cleanup project. So cool. Um, I will I will leave that up to y'all. Um, I I will double check my calendar and see if I will even be here next month at, at the the regular meeting time. I think I will. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, no worry. It was just something I was throwing out there. So because I didn't know if we wanted to like yeah, keep the momentum going or if we just wanted to be like, okay, let's take a pause here and then <laughs> go back and revisit. So that's all. <laughs> um, no, it's a good idea. Uh, We, we can be fluid about it. I think okay. it sounds like Taryn is pretty, pretty flexible and uh, well, we, you can let us know. And if, if it's not going to work, it's fine. We got something else we could talk about. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Why don't we, um, let me, let me get this spreadsheet going and let's like, see how we, how we feel about putting things in there. And if we need a, a whole meeting to discuss those things or okay. if we can just work on the spreadsheet. Sounds good. Thank you so much for all of this input, y'all. This was so thank you. incredibly helpful for me. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for coming and uh, talking to us about this. It's very exciting that uh, this is being developed. So, yay. Uh, yes. All right. <laughs> well, we'll see everybody next month. Have a good night, Thanks. everybody. Have a great day, Bye. everyone.